one. So I am a waitress, and last weekend, I opened up the restaurant for the first time on a Saturday, busiest day of the week, and I was the only server on the clock until 5 p.m. So that meant I had the entire dining room and cocktail section, which is an entirely different room in the restaurant, to serve all alone until 5 p.m. I had seven four tops and one eight top, one eleven top and two two tops, all within under an hour of opening the restaurant. This is my first serving job, and I'm still getting comfortable with serving. I started crying while taking orders, and I can't get over how embarrassing and unprofessional that was. In addition, we don't have a host or a dishwasher at the moment, so I also had to seat everyone at their table and do the dishes both in the kitchen and behind the bar. I found it extremely overwhelming to seat the guests, take drink and food orders, prepare all the sides for the dishes in the kitchen, run my food to the tables, bus all those tables, and do dishes while being attentive to all my tables. It was really hard for me personally to be able to serve my tables while staying extra attentive and making sure they had everything they needed, refills, extra sauces, etc, etc. But even while doing so, I couldn't actually talk to my tables and try to make a connection with them because I was so busy. And this clearly upset the customers, which is 100% understandable. And I do not blame them. I wanted to tell them so badly that I was the only server in both the dining room and the cocktail. So maybe they could understand my situation better, but I obviously didn't, because that shouldn't be an excuse. But I just wanted some sympathy and understanding. It just really sucked that night because the customers were very upset with me for not being able to get their refills as quick as usual, and food taking longer to come out. Which again is totally understandable. It just really fucking sucked because I know I could not only have made better tips and had a better day at work, but I could have left our guests so much more satisfied with their dining experience if my boss didn't schedule only one server to attend all the restaurant sections until 5pm. But like I said, this is not only my first serving job, but it was also my first time opening the restaurant. Maybe it's normal to have that many tables to yourself at other places? But regardless, I personally was not used to it, or ready for that. On a typical night, we have two servers who split the dining room in half. So then they each serve their designated half of the dining room. Then we have another two servers who split the cocktail section in half. So on a typical shift, I would have a section that includes five booths that can seat up to four people, one table that can seat four people, and another table that can seat up to six people. On a normal night, I will usually be serving five tables at a time, around 20 guests on average. On a busy night, my entire section of seven tables can easily be filled with the full 30 guests, so saying that, this is my comfortable max number of people that I can serve while still being attentive and not under pressure. Going back to the shift I was explaining above, I was serving 51 guests alone that all came in under an hour of opening. I wish I could say how many tables and guests I had served until my co-worker came in at 5pm, but I stopped counting after like 40 minutes into opening. So I mean, it was reasonable for me to break down from the stress and upset customers, right? It's all I've been able to think about. I know that it's all in the past, but I just wish I never had to experience that. Let me know your opinions and experiences as a server. Two, the following story is by the same author as the first. So, as you know, I am a waitress. However, I am also in high school, which clearly wouldn't have been relevant to mention in my first rant. I am a senior in high school, so since I am 18, I don't legally have any limits to how many hours I'm allowed to work or how late the job is legally allowed to keep me there. But I feel like my boss does not take into consideration that I am still in high school, which she 100% is aware of, because she asks me how my senior year is going and such. That being said, I typically work five days a week, which I have no problem with. I actually enjoy my job, plus I need the money because I have zero support from my family. But the thing is, I wake up at 6am to get ready for school, and I have to be at school before 7.30am. I am at school all day, and I don't get out until 3pm. That's a whole seven and a half hours of being at school. Then I am always scheduled to come into work right at 4pm. 
Though I rush to get home, eat something as quick as possible, since I don't have time to eat at school. I will explain later. I rush to change into my work uniform, and I fix up my hair and do my makeup. And yeah, I could cut some time by not doing my makeup, but I feel more presentable and confident when I do a little bit of makeup since my entire job revolves around talking and serving people. So doing some makeup not only makes my tips go up, but allows me to be more confident at work. And confidence affects so much more than you can imagine when you're a server. And yes, I could also cut some time by doing my makeup before school. But one, I'm too tired in the morning to do all that, and two, we have to wear masks at school, so makeup, and my skin being suffocated under a mask for seven and a half hours, is acne waiting to happen. And my skin is super prone to breaking out. So, after rushing all around, I have to be out of the house by 3.30 in order to get to work on time since it's a 25 minute drive. Once I'm at work, I'm either scheduled to work in the dining room or in the cocktail section. If I'm in the dining room, the kitchen closes at 10 p.m., so that means the kitchen stops taking orders at 10. But I am most likely still going to have some tables who are finishing up. So during that time, I multitask and do all of my side work to close up the restaurant. Then I will eventually get home around 11 p.m. However, if I'm working in the cocktail section, the bar doesn't close until 12 a.m., so, with those same circumstances, I'm not getting home until around 1am. That being said, especially on the nights that I don't get home until 1am, I am so extremely tired, because not only have I gone from 7.5 hours of school straight to another 6 to 8 hour shift at work, but I still have homework, projects and studying to do. It's been getting pretty tough balancing my school life and work life, but I'm trying my best to make it happen. I've had to drop a significant amount of my advanced classes, not because they were too hard for me, but because it was quite impossible for me to balance the workload I was given and not totally fail my classes. Even when dropping all these advanced classes, it is still pretty hard to maintain my schoolwork just because I am so extremely sleep deprived. I try to do my schoolwork when I get home, but I always end up falling asleep halfway through. Because I fall asleep during my schoolwork after coming home from work, I end up having to turn in assignments late, and I have to skip breakfast in the morning so I can work on whatever homework assignments that are due that day. Then in school, I use my seminar, lunch, and whatever extra time in class to work in my homework. It's gotten to the point that I skip school some days when I don't have tests so that I can go to the public library and use that time to catch up on assignments and study. I only do that when I feel like I'm really falling behind and utilizing the school day to study and complete my assignments is more beneficial. Before dropping my advanced classes, I had at least two sheets of homework in each of my seven classes, was assigned around two or three projects a week, and had two to three tests a week that I needed to study for. I know it doesn't sound like much, but in perspective it really is. I used to be a great student, 4.7 GPA, but I just can't do that anymore. I don't get to come home and study and do homework like I used to, or at my previous job. I would get home at 9pm, so I still had a lot of time for schoolwork. My grades are dropping and it makes me so upset because I know what I am capable of. It just really sucks. A lot. I have tried talking to my boss about it, but there isn't much she can do about my hours, since she can't just change when the restaurant closes for my sake, you know? And yeah. I could get another job, but I'm making such good money here as a server. On average, I'm making $25 an hour, which I'm not going to be able to get anywhere else as an 18-year-old who is still in high school, and I really need the money. I'm going into college soon, and since I have no financial support for my family, I really need to have a good job to support myself. I think my boss is also not able to understand my situation as deeply, because the rest of my co-workers are either older adults who work there full-time, as their main source of income, or the rest of them are in their early 20s and doing their undergraduate and don't have to be at school almost eight hours every day. Thanks for listening to my rant. 3. To set the scene, this happened at my old job at a chain breakfast place, where Sunday mornings were our busiest time of the week. I was 17 at the time, so the Saturday night before I was with some friends and stayed up late drinking. I'll also add that I'm a female. Woke up the next morning late, realized my apron was dirty, my pants were too big and I didn't have a belt, forgot makeup, the whole nine yards. And I just knew it was going to be one of those days. 
I get to my shift and everything is going fine. I was one of the top servers at this place and I was really good at my job. With this being said, I could pretty much get away with doing whatever I wanted here. Around 11, it started to slow down slightly, so I had one open booth at the very front of my section near the door and host stand. One old man decided to seat himself in my section, which I have an absolute zero tolerance policy for, especially on this day. So I decided to finish helping my other tables before greeting him. It was absolutely less than five minutes that he waited there. I walk up to him, start to ask him, Oh no, did the host not grab your menu or drink, as I usually do, to make self-seaters feel guilty for ignoring the host stand? However, I am unable to finish my question before he loudly interrupts me with, Did you fall in a tackle box or something? And a look of disgust I have never seen in my life. I ask, uh, excuse me? Now, I didn't understand immediately what he was talking about, but for context, I have a nostril and septum piercing. He replies, What the hell kind of restaurant lets people with fish hooks all over their face work here? Disgusting. Get me a new server. One that doesn't look like a bowl. I'm flabbergasted. Now, don't get me wrong, I've dealt with plenty of rude and demeaning customers at this place, considering a great lot of the people that dined there were elderly and lacked a filter. A lot of men would call my piercings bull rings and light-hearted jokes, and I would always laugh, it never bothered me. Never, though, had I had someone that bold. I say, most of the wonderful servers here actually have piercings, so I suggest you leave if that's the case, because I won't be serving you. And I walk away. If that had been the end of it, and I wasn't having one of those days already, I would have been fine. But that's not it. He gets up and starts screaming for a manager. We didn't technically have one on shift, as I usually dealt with customer issues if need be, and I had access to a manager card that I was allowed to use as needed. I asked the oldest server, and the only one without face piercings, to go deal with him. She walks up front, and he immediately starts screaming, and I mean full volume, making every customer in the restaurant turn their heads. I'm here from back of house, hurting your ears screaming. I stood in the kitchen and listened. These are some of the quotes from this piece of shit about me and my face. I know you guys are hard on help, but there's no way you're this hard on help. Absolutely fucking disgusting. You guys would let someone as nasty as that work here. That bitch with the fish hooks needs to be fired. It's so unsanitary that she could work here. This establishment is going to shit, and I will never be back here. With many more similar messages. And last, but not least... Her face is the biggest turnoff I've ever seen in my life. I cried, and the cooks went up front and kicked him out. Love those guys. 4. <sighs> Yesterday was just one of those days that felt extremely long. Everyone was being extra. And at some point, things don't feel real anymore. <laughs> Side note, I'm not a server, but a host who is kind of being taught manager shit. The morning was really busy. Normally that's fine, but we had a newish server covering and they can't handle as many tables yet. M. The other host sat M like normal and didn't really check to see if they were okay. So when I finished helping another server get soups and salads for a large party, I told the other host not to seat them. Went to the table they hadn't been to yet, took their order and got them their food. This happened again later too. I was a bit overwhelmed at this point, trying to help other servers too, do host tasks, including to go. Take care of this table who needed something literally every time I walked by, buzzing, etc. The owner came in later and usually helps with hosting stuff. It really wasn't too busy for a Saturday night, but they would skip M a few times and said it's because they couldn't handle it. Owner leaves, and it's pretty dead besides a few tables and two servers left. Usually one will leave around 9, and the last one stays to close. It's about 9.15, and M gets an attitude with me, because they want to leave, but they're the last server. I said talk to the other server then, because I don't know what to do, it's almost time to go anyway. They said no, and just stood at the host stand, acting pissed. Then M looked at the rotation list and asked why they had less. It was still a pretty normal amount, but I tried to explain what the owner did, and they just weren't getting it, and eventually said they'd just talk to the owner. Like, okay, cool, then don't be rude to me, thanks. 
Thankfully, no one else came in. Just had some takeout orders, but one guy calls up at 9.40, orders multiple things with mods. That's fine, but he calls back a few minutes later, adding more to the order and naming every extra sauce he needs. Got his order packed, servers tipped out, just waiting on him, so got a little bit of food from what both made. He came in at 10, then proceeded to ask for another container from the back, more sauce, utensils, more utensils, asking if each thing was in there. No tip either, but whatever. I lock up and start closing, but get another phone call. She asks to place an order, and I tell her we closed at 10. Probably should not have answered, but phone rings is just muscle memory. She says, but it's only 9. I've been here all day, I can assure you it is after 10. She then got nasty with me, insisting it was 9. So I told her it's past 10, we're closed, goodbye. What? Tried to eat fast, but didn't have time to finish. Yesterday wasn't even that bad. Definitely dealt with worse, but I'm just tired and kind of moody at this point. And my body's still feeling like crap after getting the booster shot. Dealing with the Sunday crowd didn't help. So time to just sit in complete silence for a while. People that tip on carry out, you're wonderful. Five. Around 2009, I worked at this little mom-and-pop all-you-can-eat buffet. We were the only one around the area that served seafood on Fridays. The food was actually pretty good all around. We stayed pretty busy most evenings. One evening, I stayed a little over my shift to help clean up some tables, the buffet, and just do a little extra to help out because it was super busy. I was walking around, clearing off plates, checking on tables, filling drinks, and asking how everything was. You know, typical server stuff. I finally came across one table with an older couple, and, what I'm assuming was because of the kid's age, their grandson. I asked if everything was okay, and with a mouth full of food and two empty plates that clearly had food on them right next to her, she shook her head and said, Ow! Oh no, I'm so sorry to hear that, may I ask what was wrong? As I pick up the plates that are clearly hers. Everything is absolutely awful! I don't know how y'all are even in business. This has to be the worst food I've ever tasted. I want to speak to your manager. At this point, her husband is rolling his eyes so hard I can practically hear them. I look around the packed restaurant of very satisfied customers. Well, I do apologize for that. I'll go grab my manager for you. With the plates in hand, I go to get my manager and explain the situation to him. He and I both return to the table, and she immediately starts on a rant to him. He very patiently listens to her, while I'm still standing there with her plates in my hand. When she finally stops talking, my manager, in the most polite tone, begins speaking to her. Wow. I'm sorry to hear you've had such a bad experience. I've never had anyone complain about the food. In fact, we've had nothing but compliments. But I do have to ask, he points to the plates in my hand, are those your plates that very clearly were filled with food and are now empty? She is completely dumbfounded at this point and starts trying to defend herself but is stumbling over her words. At this point, her husband starts laughing so hard and loud, even the neighboring tables look over. You just got caught trying to get a free meal I told you you wouldn't get. Quit lying to this young man and just deal with it. The food is better than anything you've ever cooked. Young man, the food is great. I contained my laughter, took that as my cue to exit, grabbed the rest of the plates off the table and walked away. My manager followed shortly after and told me that I could go home for the evening since I handled that situation very well and I was already over my shift. Moral of the story, don't try to get free food when there is clear evidence working against you that you actually enjoyed the food. Hey everybody, Hellfraser here, and thank you very much for listening to Spinning Plates, episode 169. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. And fuck you to the dogs that were barking while I was recording. Rrr. Little puppers. Okay. Uh, well, we're done now. No grumbles, no grumbles. We're done now. That's fine. Right, this is Saturday. What date is it, actually? Have I got... Saturday the 9th. Okay. 
And no shout outs today. I think the next one's the, the 11th, the 19th. I'm not sure. Sometime this month. Okay, I'm going to keep the rest of the outro short because I've got uh, I've got a few errands to do today. Uh, and I want to make sure I get them all done in time so I can do a little stream later of some kind. Uh, let's see. We'll have a question. No, we'll have a question of the day. Let's see. Hell Freezer's question of the day. Let's see. Okay, uh, this was a thing I was doing the other day. Uh, uh, which song, and no arguments in the comments, please, but which song, maybe there's more than one, do you personally find is better than the original artist who wrote it? Or the rather, the original artist who performed it, because they didn't necessarily have written it. For example, in my opinion, the first person to perform... How am I supposed to live without you? You know, how am I supposed to live without you? It was originally performed by Laura Branigan, but it was written by Michael Bolton. And I think when he did his version, I think that was better. I, this might be sacrilege, I think the Joe Cocker version of With a Little Help, with a little help From My Friends is better than the Beatles version. I'll get by with a little help from my friends. All I need that right. Uh, so much better. And honestly, there's a list that could go on and on and on. And I've heard a number of ones, you'll occasionally see comments on the YouTube musicians' channels like, oh, this was better than the original. And there's been occasions I've actually thought that too. It happens. Oh, another one. Uh, mm, right, don't quote me on this, but I think Bonnie Raitt, uh, she didn't write it, but she was the first person to perform I Can't Make You Love Me. Uh, but the best version I've heard is the George M Michael version. It was, turn down the light. Turn down. Well, I wouldn't sing too much because, you know, copyright. But uh, you get the idea. So, in a comment below, which songs do you think were better than the originals, in your opinion, of course? We're not making any definite statements here. Please don't be mad at me if you're a fan of the original artists. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.